Hello there, everybody! I'm Mr. Game Pie, and welcome back to Let's Play Kirby's Dream Land 3! Alright, today we're gonna take on the rest of the second area. And it's more water, and we're also introduced to these enemies. They're kind of behind waterfalls, they're a bit obscure right now. But basically, those enemies are kind of like knights that utilize each of the copy abilities that are available to you throughout the game. And, uh, yeah, they, you can get a different copy ability from each of them. And they're going to appear quite a few times. And that completely missed. I should probably, like, swim a little bit higher there. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so today we can take Rick through a little bit of these levels. But, uh, after a while, things are gonna get dangerous. So, we have a variety of rooms here. You can undoubtedly get some animal helpers in them, but we already have our hamsters, so we don't need to do that. Also, I'm pretty sure you get the spark ability from that particular fish right there. But, uh, only Kine and Choo Choo can copy abilities underwater. Kine just allows Kirby to inhale underwater for some reason, probably because he's a fish. And, uh, Choo Choo uses her tentacle to grab enemies, as I have previously mentioned. And these doors are enemies but you can only beat them whenever you're like, whenever they appear to be enemies. The actual doorway will be a different shading, like right there. All right, so I believe that here up in a second, we're going to be going to a keep moving section. Yes, yeah, so right about here. I could just, yeah, there we go. So yeah, uh, oh. Go. Let's not go where the stars are because that has enemies. And I don't want to deal with enemies. Alright, so this room actually has a door over here. It's just, it's a completely hidden door. It's only really implied that it exists because if you go through the other door, you end up on the other side of this hallway. And so then you're like, hey, how do I get to the symmetrical thing? Whenever the. Yeah, uh, I think it's implied. Because it's, yeah, there, there were two doors, and there's two hallways on the other side, so clearly one door leads to one side of the hallway, and the other door leads to the other side. Yeah, uh, here we have our super Gordo, Captain Stitch. And also there are waterfalls. Oh no! Okay. Yeah, waterfalls make it so that you cannot jump as effectively. There we go, he's almost down. Maybe if I just... Oh, that didn't quite work as, as, as I expected. But at least it got the job done, and we're going to need his ability here. And Rick's needle ability is basically the worst in the game. Although I guess it can still do this. There we go. That's our person that we need to rescue for this world. And I'm going to get rid of that ability now because it is terrible. What? Okay, I couldn't outrun it. But hey, the cutter ability's still fun. Nope, he jumped. No, he just, I just completely missed. He didn't need to move to avoid that. Until he did move, and then he didn't avoid it anymore. That's how things work. Alright, let's go. You know, this is a thing that happens a lot in Kirby's Dream Land 3, is that whenever they try to give you enemy-based challenges, the level design often just sort of feels repetitive. Alright, here we go, got our new heart star, let's go! I would really like that maximum tomato. Got it! Excellent! Okay, so we've had a lot of fun with Rick, but now we're going to not need to use Rick. So, uh, yeah, this is another one of the Animal Helper's Important People levels. And in this case, we're going to be finding, uh, Pitch's mom in this level. However, we can't just bring Pitch into this level to, you know, get, get to his mom. And we'll be seeing why eventually. Because that's what we do in video games. We see what happens. We also interact with the game to influence what happens due to the nature of this particular medium of fiction. 
And also, I am running away from Kirby right now. <laughs> it's hamster only run! But now I need Kirby to go through the door. There we go. So yeah, here's Kine. We need Kine to get through this next room. If we don't have Kine, we can't go through this strong current that's up here. And as we can see, if we follow the current and just go into this door, it just brings us back to the room where Kine was. So yeah, if you brought Pitch into this level, then you, you could just go, go as him the straight way through. That is not the case. This is the part where we have to drop him off. No, instead we'll have to p find Pitch somewhere else in this level. Also, Kine's cutter ability is pretty cool. Also, bats. Alright, let's see here. We're going to need the fire ability and the stone ability, and actually I passed up the fire ability. I need to go back. It is kind of sad how Kine's uh, fire ability and cutter abilities are basically the same thing. Alright, there we go. That's the fire ability that I need. Boom! Yeah, look at that. It's, it's the same thing. I think the only difference is that Cutter is better underwater, while Fire is goes a little bit further on the land. And by further, I mean it just it never stops. Alright, so we have a variety of blocks that we need to get Kine past. And uh, we already got, you know, we, we broke down the Fire blocks, but... Okay, that's not exactly what I was expecting to happen. But now we need to break the stone blocks. And it should be somewhere around here. We got a rocky around here somewhere. There he is! Okay. That's that's nice. Kirby not rolling down the hills. That's that's alright. Anyway. There we go! Our rock form has broken the wall! And now we grab our fish buddy, and move on. Give me the electrical ability. Kind spark ability is not nearly as broken as it used to be, sadly. Like seriously, this, it used to be like one of the best abilities in the game. But now it's just kind of pathetic. But it's better than nothing! Yeah, seriously. It used to be that the, the, uh, the light bulb never went out, and you could, like, launch it forward, and whenever it hit something, it would explode, and you could remotely detonate it, and it was really good, and now it's just sort of not, not that really good at all. Yep. Alright. So now we have this area, and going through this current leads us to a door. And behind that door is Pitch! That's not what I meant to do. Okay. Okay. You are being... Oh my gosh. You, you are being problematic. What is this? Oh yeah, I can remotely control Pitch. That's cool. And I can't really get rid of Gooey right now because we're underwater and I can't really inhale him. So I guess... I guess Gooey is following us around for now. That said, at this point, we just sort of need to go with the flow with Pitch. I guess I could have grabbed the candy, but we would have had to go all the way around again, and that wouldn't have done much good. Oh yeah, right. Pitch isn't going to be very good underwater. We got some items there, but we would need kind for those. So, can't get them. Oh, avoid Gordos. We don't want to touch a spiky ball. That wouldn't be appreciated whatsoever. And still no land. Still can't uh, get rid of. Okay, please go up. Please go up. Gooey, please. You're you're just being ridiculous now. He's really not helpful, is he? All right, we're almost to the door. There we go. They're gonna put you through a lot of rooms like those throughout the game, and they're not very fun. All right, here we go. Now we have some land. We don't have any solid land, but we're almost there. There we go. Let's just get rid of these enemies here. Nope. Gotta get rid of this guy, too. Okay, there we go. So, real quick. 
Get out of here. There we go. Peach has some pretty cool copy abilities, if I'm gonna be honest. Being able to just remotely send Pitch out and then, like, make him attack people, it's great. Unfortunately, you can't move while using that ability. Oh, he actually blocked the arrow, nice! Alright, there we go. End of the level. And the burbs are happy together. Look at them. They're so adorable. And now we're moving on. Let's just grab that pet brew. Because I'm not getting that maximum tomato. And now we're going to go back and get another Rick. So I'll see you here in a second. All right. So here we have another level with more things to do. So yeah, uh, oh, here we go. I'm glad I got Rick because now we're introduced to sand. Yep, and uh, normally if we were running on this sand, we would be slowed down by it. But Rick is not. And he would have probably been right here anyway. Okay, that's nice. But yeah, Rick can walk normally on sand, and that is a good. Because then you can go fast. And as we all know, you gotta go fast. Rick is just generally very good at going fast. I mean, he's a hamster. And hamsters are known for running a lot. On wheels. Like, seriously, I've had several hamsters, and they're very adorable, and they go really fast if you let them. Alright, so this is a bit of a puzzle room. You have to take the right pathways, or else you'll have to go back to the beginning again. And, uh, fortunately, I know what the right pathways are, so we don't have to waste a bunch of time here. And, uh, here we have some little bars. I ca I'd kind of compare them to, like, the fire bars of the Mario series. And I believe... Yes, we have things. So, behind this door, we see a pattern. It's sort of a little cross pattern. And in the upcoming room, we have a big block formation. All right, I'm just I'm gonna need to lose the power here to be able to uh, effectively do this. Yeah, we have to make these blocks look like the blocks that we've previously seen. There we go, and the chime lets us know that we did it right. So with that done, we basically got the heart star at this point. Basically, there's this dude that's a shape, and he wants us to change that to be the same shape as he is. And the dude has like a really weird name that's like comprised just like we some strange letters and numbers, and it's it's a pretty weird thing. I guess I can get the parasol ability. What's behind this door? Nobody! Oh, no, it's Goo. There would probably be Rick behind here, too, but... Well, we already have him. You know, back in Dreamland 2, whenever you had an animal helper that they were already going to give you, they, uh, they actually gave you a little bonus for it. They would either give you Gooey or Blob, who would either restore lives or health. Oh, and I guess I just lost my ability. Yeah, here's the dude. He's the same shape as the blocks that we just made. Let's try to get that maximum tomato. That is not the maximum tomato. That's bad, because this next boss is a little bit annoying. It's Acro! He's a whale. And he'll try to, like, launch himself at us. But he'll make rocks come out of the wall whenever he does so. Ow. That's bad. I'm going to die, aren't I? Whoa. No, I couldn't jump. Great, now I have to do this all in one hit left. And now we're in the water. This is where the real battle really begins. 
We have to basically spit our bubbles at Acro now. No. But we don't actually spit the bubbles directly at Acro. We spit bubbles at the things that Acro launches about the battlefield. And I died, of course. Yeah, that wasn't gonna end well. I'm gonna go r get Rick again real quick. And we're back, and this time we have the Cutter ability! So that should help us actually take on the boss a little bit more effectively than last time. Or not, because we got comboed. There we go. Come on now. Let me jump over ya. There we go! That's how you get things done. And now we're underwater once more. Whoa, gotta be careful. Don't want to stand too close to him, or else he'll just, like, swim right into us. Got him! Yeah, whenever, uh, whenever he's stuck in the wall there, that's a good chance to attack him if you have a copy ability. Because he's not really moving or anything. And now, once more, we exorcise dark matter from the general vicinity. And underwater hamster dance! Look at Rick, he's so adorable riding a warp star! Yeah, real quick. So, uh, you see how the little dark matter tendril is, like, a little- it's, it's still sort of there on level 3. But, uh, whenever you look at levels 2 and 1, the dark matter tendril is completely gone. If you've gotten all the heart stars, and then you've beaten the boss, the tendril will completely disappear. However, if you haven't gotten all the heart stars, or haven't beaten the boss after having gotten all the heart stars, then the tendril will still be there even after you beat the world. Just this, It'll just be the small one, instead of the big long one that prevents you from going to a world at all. In any case, next time we're going to be going to Sand Canyon. And apparently, I wasn't the only one who thought that Gooey was being useless today. <laughs> anyway, with that said, I'm Mr. Game Pie. See you next time!